Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is part two of our distributed infrastructure talk. In this section, we're going to walk through the technical aspects of how RackN has built a distributed infrastructure manager. In part one, we've already covered a lot of the background and intro, and I suggest you uh, review that for background. And in part three, we're actually going to dive into the demo. So it's important to understand that the things I'm going to show you about being a distributed infrastructure management solution is built on top of what we've already done with digital rebar. There isn't a second product. There isn't a second uh, solution. Everything I'm going to show you is actually using digital rebar with multi-site management capabilities built into it. That means the same APIs, the same code, HA capabilities, vendor agnostic uh, integrations. As a matter of fact, a manager can also be a site controller. And we've built all of these pieces incrementally. We feel like this is really important because we didn't want multi-site management to be an afterthought or an add-on. It's integral into the product, and that's how we treat it. So let me take you through what we're doing. I need, I'm going to use this drawing uh, quite a bit over the next couple slides, and so I want to make sure it's clear what we're explaining. This drawing has multiple clouds in it. It has edge infrastructure, uh, which is different than cloud has different hardware requirements and data centers quickly evolving, and it shows colo and on-prem data centers in the mix with this. Uh, Rackend specialty is colo and on-prem, uh, but all of this infrastructure is capable of being automated with digital rebar using our infrastructure as code methodologies. Generally, we know that different sites are managed by different teams and tools. Typically, that's created a significant management challenge where teams don't get to share and collaborate. And we're aiming to change this as part of the rack and success cycle. So the first rule in distributed infrastructure management, and the, really the core feature here, is that you need to maintain site autonomy. So the way we approach distributed management, decentralized computing, is to ensure that every site can run by itself. This is why it's a decentralized approach. So no matter what happens with your network, no matter where your infrastructure or management is, every site can be managed. That means it can be bootstrapped uh, completely by itself. It can be put on a submarine and run and completely can be completely autonomous. This is enabled because of the way we've built infrastructure as code as a modular system where you can actually take all of the components you need and bundle it into a system. I know you're thinking, but I thought this was about multi-site infrastructure management, and it is. But I want you to think about the fact that without having site autonomy, a multi-site system is really a centrally managed system, and that was not an acceptable design criteria for us. So we wanted to ensure that whatever we built was actually a federated system where individual sites were always able to keep running. That enables us to run an air gap, edge, low bandwidth situations, and bootstrap systems so that they can be ready to go even before the network connections are fully enabled. Then we added the idea of a multi-site mirror. So in this case, one digital rebar site can subscribe to the event stream, really the transaction logs, at another site and or multiple sites. This is not a one-to-one -one relationship. Any digital rebar system that has manager enabled can subscribe to data from any other sites that it wants to listen to. This allows you to effectively create a mesh. Each one of those subscriptions creates a mirror of the data. So as you're watching uh, that, managed, that manager site, it will get live updates from all of the managed sites that it's connected to. If you chain these together, it will work as a proxied connection. And so you can create hierarchical views in which systems are subscribed directly to the sites they want to manage or subscribed to a manager and then create a roll up or aggregated view. These are mirrored data. So of this subscription process, the actual data stored at that endpoint is read only. And that's very important because what we're really doing is we're never, since we're never compromising site autonomy, we don't allow you to have a confusion about which infrastructure is the source of truth. 
the edge, the site running that automation, is the source of truth. It's worth noting also that this same transaction subscription method methodology is our high availability methodology. And there's really very little difference between a high availability pair and a manager pair. The main difference being that a high availability pair can take over if there's a failure, whereas the manager is a subscription and monitoring system. The next component of multi-site management is the federated control. And the way this works is that when you make an API request to a manager against mirrored data, the system is smart enough to understand that that information is not sourced at the manager and has to be proxy forwarded into the system in a controlled way. So when that request comes in, the digital rebar endpoint forwards it to the known source of truth. And because this is a, a proxy system, it is able to bounce that request through multiple hops to get to the, the end site that owns that information. Also very important to understand that when you make these control requests, the manager subscriptions are from the manager into the endpoint. That means that you're always going from the more secure location to the less secure location. It's a design that our customers told us was very important to help them maintain their DMZs and firewall rules. The Amazing thing about how all this works together though, is since the managers are just digital rebar endpoints with the added information of knowing where the source of truth is for that information, you can make a request against any data in any manager and the manager will figure out where it needs to go on your behalf. That allows regional and global control centers to make multi-site actions and then have those actions correctly routed to the appropriate uh, site for implementation. All of this happens automatically behind the scenes and it's incredibly seamless in operation, which I'll show you in the demo. The final point of this, and one of the absolutely critical things about how Digital Rebar is constructed, is that we leverage infrastructure as code to ensure that the sites have the same or consistent automation. They don't all have to have the same automation, we have controls for that, but it's very important that when you make changes to your infrastructure automation, you have a way to distribute it consistently and reliably across your distributed infrastructure fleet. That is another component of the distributed infrastructure management system with Digital Rebar. It leverages our deep, deep infrastructure as code capabilities and the fact that we've built everything we do around infrastructure as code. So when you turn on this component, it literally is able to then synchronize and control every aspect of the automation at all of the sites that you have to manage. We use a concept called version sets that allow you to extract multiple infrastructure as code components into another managed set and then deploy those in a controlled way. When you start managing 10, 20, 100, 1,000 sites, this type of control infrastructure is absolutely essential because it ensures that you have a smooth, coordinated rollout across your fleet. You know exactly what is controlled at each site. It's also worth mentioning that this system can also upgrade Digital Rebar itself as part of the rollout process. So we've gone through four ways that work together to solve the distributed infrastructure management challenge. Each one of these four things is valuable in its, in its own. And we have customers who are interested in using them in different ways, but the strength really comes from putting them all together into an in integrated and decentralized management platform. I hope this has been helpful. And really importantly to us, has had you rethinking, how am I actually going to manage? When you have a distributed infrastructure, and really everybody today does, then we need to be very, very careful and deliberate about how we manage complexity, how and what we actually need to centralize. And then do we have to trade off between choice, control, and effort? At RackN, we don't believe you do. That the success cycle ensures that you can take lessons learned at one infrastructure and apply it across your fleet at, with confidence. I hope this has been a helpful discussion. We've really gone into the four key feature sets 
that RACN uses to manage distributed infrastructure. The next part is a lot of fun. We're going to do a demo and walk you through how all these pieces work. Looking forward to talking to you there.